Hello and good afternoon. Hello and good afternoon. It is May 21st, 2014. Time is 4.44 p.m. Eastern Time here in upstate New York, the southern tier of New York State where I live and reside. And we're just waiting waiting for an audience to appear and we have one viewer we have a couple viewers we have Kubra, Sue, Catherine Arnold welcome to Tolkien Trivia Thursday now we're down to one viewer down to one viewer and I want to say hello and welcome to Token Trivia Thursday. I know we have some web viewers out there. The Periscope isn't indicating that, but it is Token Trivia Thursday. This is episode five, Kubra. I hope I'm pronouncing that properly. I am Fireman Rich on Twitter. My first name is Rich. And this is a view from my back porch. Just waiting for a few more individuals. And if not, I'll just continue on with Token Trivia Thursday, Episode 5. And what I do, I have a book I'm reading, basically, about five or six questions. And it pertains to J.R.R. Tolkien. And we have no viewers. No viewers at all. Well now, that's different. We'll just look at the cornfield out in the... I don't think I'm going to have Tolkien Trivia Thursday if uh, we don't have an audience. I, we probably have some web viewers, but from what I'm seeing on the Periscope here, I can't see if there's any, any web viewers, because it's not indicating as such. So I'm not sure what is going on and I forgot to bring my my cell phone to see to check to see if it tweeted out so maybe we may not have token trivia Thursday maybe there's a lot of people busy and I'll have to oh we have David David from Party World good afternoon David I've been sitting here for about uh, two minutes now, waiting for a little bit of an audience. I was almost going... Oh, we, do we have David? Yes, we have David in the broadcast from the great country of Ireland. And we welcome you, sir. I am just uh, on the back porch with an adult beverage here, just getting done with the day job on this Thursday and that's you know what it is it's token trivia Thursday so you are a regular and I will continue because I have one regular we had a couple people in here earlier I don't have the mic so it might be a little bit windy and if you hear a tractor in the distance they're plowing the field again okay David is joining joining again hello David we are here for Tolkien Trivia. Welcome to the broadcast. I'm just ending my, uh, just got back from the day job. Very eventful day today. Very busy day at the day job. And I'm sort of looking forward uh, to this Tolkien Trivia. And been online. I've been on the broadcast here for about four minutes. Had some people, I have a regular, David, so we're going to do this. No hard questions tonight. Well, we'll see. If anything, it's entertaining, and I'm reading the book as we go along. So I'm going to try and get through about at least six to eight questions, and we'll see who comes in. We got Greg. Yes, we have our two regulars. We have Greg from the U.K., and we have David from Ireland. I greatly appreciate you coming, and I do have the Tolkien Trivia book here. And let's not hesitate and go with the first question here. The author had serious qualms about the title 
of one of the three volumes. Which of the, the volumes was it? And what made him worry? So that would be the three volumes, The Fellowship of the Ring, The Two Towers, and The Return of the King. So which one of those did he have an issue with? That would be J.R. Tolkien. Serious qualms. He had some serious doubts, probably. So, I hope you all had a good day. I know you're ending your day. Two towers. Okay. Greg says two towers. Any uh, answer from you, David? Two towers. Okay. We got two for two towers. Uh, with some... How's the sound, by the way? Is it sound pretty good? I'm not doing... The I don't have the mic. I forgot the mic. Primarily because I was focused on getting one of these. <laughs> Long day today. Great sound. Okay. If you do hear some noise in the background that sounds like a tractor, he is re-plowing. But the answer to the question is, with some justification, J.R.R. Tolkien feared that the return of the king carried a title that revealed too much of the climatic plot. He had hopes that the third novel would be called The War of the Rings. So that, that's interesting. I think War of the Rings would have been a better uh, title, don't you? I like that title. That's a pretty good title. Ah, uh, makes sense. Yeah, I thought so too. Okay, question two. Was the story of Frodo's adventure an instant bestseller? Oh, you like the other title? Okay. Question two. Was the story of Frodo's adventures an instant bestseller? Yes or no? Huh? You guys can comment. No. Okay. Greg says no. And David says yes. Okay. Well, the answer is no, I'm afraid, David. At first, book sa bookstore sells of the Fellowship of the Ring were steady but unsporat, unspectacular. It was only after word of mouth enthusiasm transfer, transformed the book into a campus favorite. So the college campuses pushed this, that bl sales blossomed. In response to readers' request, Allen and Urwin sped publication. There's a delay in comments. Okay. Uh, sped publication of the trilogy, trilogies, other volumes, increased printing runs. All three novels were issued within a 15-month period. So that's question two. Question three. Did J.R.R. Tolkien ever visit the United States of America? Uh, that would be a yes or a no. And I know we have some web viewers. I'm not indicating, but I'm, I'm taking that we have some. Don't think so. Okay. Greg says he doesn't think so. David, do you think J.R.R. Tolkien ever visited, visited the United States? Yes or no? Stay with yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, David, again, the answer is no, I'm afraid. In 1957... Tolkien was scheduled to come to the country to accept an honorary degree from Harvard, Marquette, and several other universities, but the trip was canceled because his wife... Stay with yes. It was canceled because his wife's ill health. I guess his wife was ill in 1957. Although he lived another 16 years, he never crossed the Atlantic, what I like to be called as, or better known as, the pond. I like that term, the pond. Cool Harvard. Yes, he, he got a, an honorary degree at uh, Harvard, and I think Marquette is cool too. And several, I, I got to research several other universities. I'm curious on the other university, but Harvard is very interesting. Okay, question number four. Which of his works did Tolkien consider the most important? Which of his works did Tolkien consider the most important? And I'm peeking ahead. Ooh. The Hobbit. Okay, that's Greg's answer. 
I think it's a little bit more serious than that. And I have this. I never read it through. His last. No. The answer is the Cimmerillion. His epic history of the first age of Middle Earth. And that is a that is a hard read. I've tried reading that, and it's very, very hard read. And I, um, I do have that. And uh, uh, that's like the Bible of Middle Earth almost and stuff. So let me take a break here. Oh, okay, Greg missed the answer. The answer to that last one, what he considered the most... Which of his works did Tolkien consider the most important? The Cimmerillion which is a very, very involved, uh, epic history of the first age of Middle-earth. So, it, and I've tried reading it. It's very, very, it's interesting, but it's very deep, I guess, and stuff like that. It's very, I would call it a hard read from this novelist reader. <laughs> um, okay, let's go with question number five. In what year did Tolkien complete the Cerulean. Do you know what year he completed it? Oh, wow, this is interesting. This is very interesting. I think that's why I bought it. Uh, I don't think either one of you guys going to get this. The answer is, although J.R.R. Tolkien began comprising sections of it 1976? Okay. Greg must be on Google. <laughs> have to Google it. I think that's what Greg just did. But he, you came close, Greg. Have no, I, harsh, have no idea. Although he began composing sections of it as early as 1913, Tolkien had not complete the Cimmerillion when he died in 1973. Fortunately, his son, Christopher... And I remember this. I remember reading about this. It, and I think that's why I ended up buying it. Skillfully and longfully gathered the shards, shards, that's interesting, of his father's great labor, the Cimmerillion, and was published in 1977. So I, I remember that. 77 was a good year for me. I don't know if you guys were born yet, but I remember it distinctly. It was a, a very good year for me. So... Um, Question six, which classic was chosen by Modern Library, Modern Library, as number one, as the number one book of the 20th century? I don't know what the Modern, Close Greg was born in 77, okay. I'll have to look at, I, I missed, a, I think I missed a Greg's comment there before David's. Which classic was chosen by Modern Library as number one book of the 20th century? Um, I'm just going to answer the question here. It's James Joyce Ulysses. Gotcha. The Modern Library Librarian Panel adjusted, adjudged the 1922 classic as the premier book of the past hundred years. The Lord of the Rings was not even listed among the top 100 titles. Never would have gotten that. Yeah, I don't think I would have gotten that either. However, this troubling oversight was has been corrected by the best of the century polls. In fact, Tolkien's trilogy... Greg, never would have gotten that. Tolkien's trilogy headed list in several reading surveys, including the BBC... Waterstone and the Fowls, James Joyce, great poet in Ireland. Oh, really? Okay. Didn't realize that, David. I'll have to look him up as far as his works. And a Fowl Society poll. So that's sort of a over my head type of uh, question and answering. Okay, we got two more bonus ones, and we're gonna call it the show, there, guys. Why did Ryan Irwin deserve a footnote in literary history? And I haven't gotten this far in the book, so I'm all new on this right here. So why did Ryan Unwin, U-N-W-I-N, deserve a footnote in literary history? This should be interesting, who he is. I have no idea who he is until I turn the page in the book. And I want to, again, appreciate David 
and Greg's uh, view here, and I have no indication. I have no idea either, Greg. So let's answer the question here. Why does Ryan Irwin deserves a footnote in literary history? Okay, here we go. And the answer is, soon after publish, publisher Stanley Unwin first received the type script of The Hobbit, he mattered of factly passed it along to his 11-year-old son, Ryan Irwin, for review. Master Irwin's report, though not unequivocally, was sufficiently enthusiastic to convince his father to publish this unknown author. Wow, that's interesting. An 11-year-old reviewed it, reviewed The Hobbit. Wow. Tolkien, to his credit, did not take unbridged at Ryan's preteen suggestion. In fact, he called him, quote, a very reliable critic. An 11-year-old reviewed The Hobbit before anybody saw it. Wow. The success depends on the job. Really? That's, that, that, is very, that is a very interesting footnote on The Hobbit. Wow. That is. Okay, last one, guys. How did Irwin earn a second footnote in literary history? He earned a second footnote. Oh, this is going to be interesting. As I turn the page. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and answer this, guys. In 1950, Irwin, the younger, by now a partner in his father's firm, heard that a reader at George Allen and Irwin had read and rejected a new submission by J.R.R. Tolkien, the Lord of the Rings, taking the man manuscript in hand, Ryan cabled his father that the Lord of the Rings was a work of genius. Although publishing, it might lose the firm a thousand pounds, approximately three thousand dollars. Cabling back, Sir Stanley Irwin opted that a work of genius might be worth a thousand pounds. I think so too. Regrettably, Irwin never witnessed the full impact of the Tolkien Renaissance. He died in 2000. Yeah, I, I, I agree to that, Greg. That is very, very interesting. And it goes to show how much other people uh, have an impact on other people's works and stuff like that. That Wow, that... that that was pretty interesting. Okay, guys, that's uh, must be a million now. Exactly, David. Exactly. Uh, get, um, David and Greg, I greatly appreciate you being in my broadcast. It makes it worth me reading this, at least having a little bit of an audience. I, I greatly appreciate and uh, um, say thank you. For the web viewers, uh, I appreciate your view on the web. I will be archiving this over on my YouTube channel. And um, I have dinner in a little bit, so um, I'm going to be sticking to this. This is our fifth episode. I, it, Greg says I enjoy it greatly. Keep it up. I am. We're going to finish this book. I have a mission that we're going to finish this book, Tolkien Trivia, because um, I never, read, to be honest with you, I never read it through. I'm at the part right now where I'm in unknown territory. So uh, it just I get to peek at the answers before I read them all to you out there in, uh, on this Periscope broadcast. So I'm going to finish my beverage. I say cheers to David and Greg, the best kind of territory. Yes, unknown territory in the literary. And David says it's great just having a beer after a busy day. Enjoy a lot. I will, sir. I want to bid you uh, cheers. You have a nice evening over there in the U.K. and Ireland. Uh, the best to you. Again, thank you for your view. Again, thank you for the, uh, the views on the web. And uh, we'll talk to you later and see you in the next Periscope from this talking head, Fireman Rich over there on Twitter. You all have uh, a good one. Again, thank you. Live life. Have fun. Ciao for now. Peace. All the best to you, Greg, and to you, David. Take care.